à tous euh, ou bonjour et bienvenue si vous vous joignez à nous pour la première fois aujourd'hui euh, au French Fest de Seattle. Welcome back to the Seattle French Fest 2022 edition, the 10th edition of the event. And we are about to start what I would say is the sweetest segment of today's festivities. Um, we had a savory uh, part uh, earlier with the beurre blanc recipe. We talked about muscadet, sel de Guérande, and some beer. Uh, but I hope you kept some place for dessert. Uh, on the menu, we have strawberries dipped in chocolate. We have the most iconic or one of the most iconic French dessert, the crème brûlée. And then we will learn how to prepare brioche in the French tradition. To achieve all this, I have the pleasure to welcome three French chefs who all work in the Pacific Northwest area. So we're really lucky to have them uh, with us today. Et on commence aujourd'hui avec Anne-Laure Ropard, chocolatier. Bonjour. Enchanté, Anne-Laure. Enchanté. Alors, uh, je dis chocolatier ou chocolatière, avec la francisation des termes ou la yeah. féminisation des titres. <laughs> Il se dit chocolatière. <laughs> chocolatière, voilà. Uh, vous êtes la propriétaire, you are the owner of Wild Peaks Chocolates, uh, based in Redmond, uh, Washington. And your chocolates are free of preservatives, GMOs, or artificial coloring. They can be found at an array of shops in the greater Seattle area, including the PCC markets, correct? Yes, uh, actually, our Easter products are hitting the shelf next week. So they'll be yeah, in all the shops uh, starting next week. So we're very excited. Parfait. Et nous, on est très contents de vous avoir avec nous aujourd'hui. Uh, surtout qu'on va faire un dessert qui semble peut-être facile uh, à prime abord, mais qui a quelques difficultés uh, techniques quand même. Oui. Uh, should I speak in English or in French? Yes. Well, I'm going back and forth, but I was about to actually repeat this in English. Oh, oh. Uh, you're here today to help us make at home what's, what may seem like a fairly easy trick, uh, yet to achieve perfection, there are a few technicalities that we need to, to master. Yeah, like uh, most people, when they do strawberry uh, dipped in chocolate, you know, you just melt the chocolate, uh, let it cool down a bit until it thickens enough, and then you dip your strawberries. Mm -hmm. The issue with that is you need to keep it in the fridge because the chocolate doesn't set properly. And if you leave it at room temperature, it's going to be like botchy. It can have white streaks yes. and it's going to soften. And so ideally what you want to do is you want to uh, make sure the chocolate hardens in the proper way. So that process is called uh, crystallization. When you buy chocolate uh, in bars, it's chocolate that has been crystallized. The cocoa mm -hmm. butter content in it um, has six different crystals. It can crystallize into and only one gives it that shiny, snappy look. Uh, so we're doing chemistry right now today with you. Ah, uh, that's why <laughs> I love chocolate. I have a, a science background. And uh, as much as I love working with chocolate, the sensory uh, part of it, I also love the, the physics and chemistry behind it. So we are going to learn how to tamper chocolate properly. So you get that shine and that snap for strawberries. But you can use it to do bark. You can use it to make decorations. and. Once your chocolate is tempered, the, the options are limitless. Uh, so uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to procure really good quality chocolate. Um, so at Wild Peaks, we work with Valrona. So this is uh, Guanaja. And uh, this type of chocolate comes in bars or wafers. Uh, so wafers, it's super practical for tempering. If you buy it in bars, you can, uh, you're going to have to chop it into small pieces. Uh, also comes in wafers. The wafers are a bit smaller. You can see here. Uh, so you can find those brands um, on Amazon, in specialty stores. What you want is coverture chocolate. This is chocolate that only has cocoa butter in it, no other types of fat. Normal commercial chocolate will be super hard to tamper. So I, I would advise against that. So we don't want any soy emulsifier or thing like that in the... Yeah, emulsifier is different. It's, oh, sorry. Yeah, control the fluidity. But sometimes uh, now chocolate has other types of uh, butters in it, which are not cocoa butters. And that's, or even oil sometimes, and you don't, you don't want that. So the first thing is you want to melt your chocolate. So you have to make about 300 grams of chocolate. You put 220 grams in a, a bowl. 
and you're going to melt that chocolate up to a certain temperature where there are no crystals left. Everything is amorphous and melted. And in dark chocolate, it's around 50 degrees C, which is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, when you reach like high 40s to 50, you know your chocolate is completely melted. Two ways to do that. One, using the double boiler, or in French, we would call it the uh, bain-marie method. So you pour a bit of water in your saucepan, your bowl with your chocolate in it, and you melt it slowly, um, uh, carefully measuring the temperature. The key thing here is you don't want your bowl to touch the water. Your bowl needs to be way above the water, otherwise it's gonna get too hot too quickly. Another one, if you have a good microwave, which works, you know, heat evenly like mine, for smaller quantities, microwave is even easier. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take about 220 grams of chocolate and you're gonna melt it in your microwave. You start one minute at the beginning and then you do it in increments of 20 and 10 seconds, depending on your microwave, uh, until your chocolate is nearly all melted. So to go faster, I've already pre-melted my chocolate. Uh, I'm not really sure whether I'm still at, around, at high 40s, so I'm using a very good quality uh, kitchen thermometer and it's going up. I might need to put it in the microwave, 44, 45. I'm just gonna put like literally like four seconds in the microwave and I have the perfect setup because the microwave is just in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go back. So and do we, when we, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was about to say the microwave, should we put max power or a lower power setting? Okay, if you've never done it, I would say medium, don't put max power because you're gonna burn your chocolate. It's even okay. more dangerous with milk chocolate because you have dairy in it and then the mm. dairy particles will burn very easily. So go slowly, take your time. You don't okay. want to go above 55 degrees uh, for sure with your dark chocolate. So now I'm at uh, 51. So that's perfect. Celsius. 51 Celsius, which is just above 120 Fahrenheit. So I've been here eight years, but I still can't figure out the whole thing. So I've written it on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I need an app to do the conversion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's kind of twice 1.8 plus 34, I think, but yeah, it's too complicated. So once you're there, once your chocolate is melted, you take the rest. So it's about 70 to 80 grams. And I'm gonna lower my computer so you can see what I'm doing. So you're gonna pour it into your melted chocolate and then you're gonna mix it vigorously because the action is actually helping the crystallization. So two forces here, you have the temperature going down and you have the uh, movement of the chocolate. So the wafers slowly melt and bring the chocolate temperature down. And in that process, uh, the melted chocolate starts crystallizing and its crystals um, basically build on the beta crystals of the hard pieces. And you have that whole crystalline structure that is slowly growing as you keep mixing. And that will make it very stable afterwards. That will make it stable and that will make it hard at room temperature, uh, shiny and snappy, which is what you want with your chocolate. So I keep bringing the temperature down. So you see my pieces are melting and I'm gonna, in maybe 30 seconds, I'm gonna start taking the temperature. So with the seeding method, what I love about it is normally to temper a chocolate, you need to bring it to, uh, let's say 50 for dark, then uh, down uh, to 28 and then you 29, 28, 29, and then up again, because crystals huh. form at about 28, 29 degrees. With seeding, what you're doing is you're helping the chocolate reach that crystallization by, by baiting it with those little seeds that you've, you've planted in that chocolate. So you don't need to do that like three stage process. So it's much faster. So here my pieces are melted. So let's see what is my temperature. So I'm putting my thermometer. I am, let's 
slowly. So I'm still a little bit above. I'm at 34. So we have two more degrees to, to go. So when I see, if I see my seed is entirely melted, I can add a couple more. I mean, you don't want to be relaxed on the temperature, but you can be somewhat relaxed on the quantity of your seed. OK. Uh, it's about between a quarter and a third. Uh, a third for me, typically, I, th I think it's a little bit too much, like it's hard to melt everything. A quarter is on the lower end. So if you want to be safe, I mean, the quantities I give in the recipe are, are in right in between. But now it's all melted. So to make sure it keeps seeding, I'm just going to add one more wafer in it. Um, OK. And talking about the recipe, it will be in the chat. And right now in the chat, someone's asking, will this work if we use two different types of chocolate at once? OK, so uh, two different types. If it's two different brands, like here, I've mixed like um, Valrona and um, Coco Bay. So it's two darks. So yes, it will work. If you mm. mix a milk and a dark, it becomes super difficult uh, to tamper because um, the temperatures are different. So even if you calculate, you know, you try to calculate the temperature based on the ratio, it's still going to be challenging. Uh, you can do it, but it's like super complicated. But yeah, <laughs> two, two different darks. It actually works beautifully. That's what I'm doing right now because this is what I had, and I wanted to show you the the two wafers. So let's see if I'm at the right temperature. Uh, it should be 31, 32, 32.5. Okay, I'm one degree, 33. Okay, so we're today, aiming for? I'm aiming for 31 to 32. 31 to 32, okay. Yeah. Yeah, still... Alors, on a chauffé à 45, 50 degrés Celsius, et là, on descend à 31, 32 degrés Celsius. Yes. So, to accelerate, because we know we are limited in time, I might overcrystallize my chocolate a bit, but I'm adding some seeds to it to cool it down. Always stirring. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to stir non-stop, but um, the thing is, once your chocolate has reached temperature, you want to keep it within 31 and 32 while you work on it. So whether you dip stuff into it or, uh, or whether you, you pour it into piping bags to do decoration. So to keep it at temperature, if you use a double boiler method, you put it back on, the, on your saucepan for about you know, five seconds um, or 10 seconds, no more. Other than that, you can use a hair dryer and you can just dry <laughs> your chocolate from the top. <laughs> You reach your, that's super practical. You know, <laughs> we actually use a, a paint gun, a heat gun. Oh, oui, a heating gun. Okay, c'est surprenant. Someone's asking if we could do the same process with white chocolate. Absolutely. White and okay. milk. Because white doesn't have, you know, people say it's not chocolate, but it actually is full of cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. So it tampers beautifully. I have, um, I have at the bottom of my recipe, I actually have the temperatures for these chocolates. Um, in terms of the melting temperature and the working temperature. I realized that I've made it a bit high because Valorona always has higher temperature and I followed the, what they said. But I say to melt the white at 45 to 50 and really 40 to 45 is enough. Okay. So I'll change that. I think we're right there now. I think we're ready. So, so if, I, if I have seed, seeds left in my chocolate, if I don't want to prevent, if I want to prevent it from over crystallizing, it's going to become very thick otherwise, I remove the pieces, right? But if I work with it right away, it's okay, I can just put them on okay. the side. Yeah. So now I'm at the right temperature, I'm 32 degrees. So first, the first thing you want to do is you want to check that your chocolate is in temper. So to do that, you can take a spoon, here I have a little spatula, and you just Gonna dip it like this, and you're gonna wait a couple minutes and to check whether it starts hardening. Untampered chocolate will stay wet for a very long time, but uh -huh. tampered chocolate will actually harden quite quickly. So you just wait a couple of minutes. While you wait to you prepare your strawberries. So I have washed my strawberries early on 
patted them dry and let them to dry completely at room temperature. Because if okay. my strawberries are cool, very cold, they are going to cool my, my chocolate down too fast. So <laughs> I don't want that. And you don't want the strawberries to be wet either because chocolate and water hate each other. Absolutely <laughs> hate each other. You're going to get disaster unless you add some fat to do a ganache or water ganache. Or, but so you really want your product to be dry. So yeah, I can see my chocolate is hardening. I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure you can see. So it means it's in temper. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our strawberries. So I'm going to remove that. And so if you look at some videos, you know, they say, oh, you can put like a toothpick. And I don't like that because they can fall off. And I mean, for me, it's more mess and gadget than anything. So you take your, your chocolate and then you dip your strawberries. Turn them like this. Look at that. How beautiful. Là, j'ai faim. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And plus the chocolate I'm using, I have to tell you, Frédéric, it's amazingly good. So. <laughs> <laughs> vous, vous nous torturez là un peu quand même. <laughs> it's sweet torture. So basically, that's what you do, you know, with your strawberry. And you let them to dry. Uh, to On what? Them. Parchment paper or something like that? Wax yes. paper? Yes. On parchment paper or wax paper, uh, that will work. I mean, yeah, now I have a little piece, you know, of parchment paper, and you just let them like that, and they're gonna detach super easily. I made some just before, so they were on parchment paper, and hmm. this is how they look like. So you know, you see the chocolate; it's shiny. Um, Don't, it, it is the secret for a shiny covered covering. <laughs> so good. So you can see, you know, very snappy, crunchy. Right. Yes, it's the, it's the secret. And sh can we keep them overnight in the fridge then, the, the strawberries, or should we let them in room at room temperature? So if you're going to, best is to do them fresh, right? I mean, so you can yep. use them during the day. But what you can do too, is um, if you want to put them in the fridge for the next day, what you want to do is put them in an airtight container. You don't okay. want the moisture of your fridge to damage your chocolate. Uh, but you know, strawberries best is to have them at room temperature. Their flavor is going to be much nicer anyway and uh, make them in the morning. The beauty of these two, if it's a bit warm outside, it's fine, you know, because untempered chocolate will become super messy. This one, you know, will work at 20, uh, at like 72, 73. Hmm. It's it, like outside form. Yeah, it keeps, uh, it snap and it's shaped. With the rest of your chocolate, you can do lots of stuff. So on, uh, for instance, I did that earlier. I mean, it's just silly little flowers. Uh, so, you can, so you can see, you can put that on your chocolate mousse. This keep for a very long time. Again, in an airtight container. I just had fun. Uh, so I did little swirls and then I curved the, I don't know if you can see. So that's like, you oh, do wow. little swirls on your, um, so this is a guitar paper. Uh, you can do it on parchment paper. It's gonna be a bit less shiny because this is very shiny if you can see. And you just do those little swirls and then you roll your paper and you keep it attached with like two dots of chocolate. And within literally two minutes, this is what you get. And you can decorate cakes with that. Um, and so then- magnifique. Yeah, Andy qui nous dit, uh, you make it look so easy. I doubt my results would be so lovely. <laughs> oh, no, no, honestly, the seeding thing. And plus, if you mess it up, no stress, you melt it again and you add, uh, you know, a little bit less than a third, a little bit more than a quarter, I would say, chocolate, a tempered chocolate back into your mix. All you did is you just tampered more chocolate. So you need okay. more strawberries. And, and for the rest, you can pour it on parchment paper and you know, spread it a bit with a spatula and you can make bark. So this, I, I didn't have much in my pantry, unfortunately, but I put uh, pistachios, pecans and salt on this one. So this is my leftover from earlier this morning. And it's great for coffee, you know, so no waste yeah. whatsoever. Oh no, I wouldn't waste any of that. <laughs> 
Anne-Laure Ropard, merci beaucoup de nous avoir partagé la, la chimie, les secrets chimiques dans le fond du chocolat. Eh bien, merci. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, chemistry secrets of chocolate. And we know about, you know, chocolate, it's all about chemistry, I think. <laughs> uh, I, and again, you are the owner of Wild Peace Chocolates and your delicacies can be found in uh, various uh, stores in the area, including the PCC markets. Ah, and you are ready for Easter. Okay, so we watch for these. They're coming to the shelves in the coming week, correct? Yes, uh, this week, yeah. This week. Praline eggs, they're so cute. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> Un grand merci, Anne-Laure. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. And on that, we're going to go, that was so beautiful. Um, on that, we're going to go to another chef that you may remember from last year, uh, Orphe Foineau. Uh, and he will share with us another secret. We're sharing a lot of secrets here today, and I love this. This one is about how to prepare brioche in a typical French fashion. Uh, he pre-recorded the cooking demo for us, and I think he's here with us today. So, merci beaucoup, uh, Orphe, d'être encore uh, de retour avec le French Fest uh, cette année. Alors, voici la recette de brioche. Aujourd'hui, nous allons raiser la recette de brioche au sucre.
Eh bien, c'était toute une aventure, ça. <laughs> this was quite a, an adventure, and now I feel very hungry watching all this. It's beautiful. Alors, un grand merci à Orphée Foineau de nous avoir partagé euh, donc cette recette. Et pour compléter notre trio de desserts, là, on va aller dans vraiment un dessert qui symbolise, pour moi, le, les cafés parisiens. When we picture a Parisian café, there is one sweet that comes to my mind right away. It is the crème brûlée. We break the sugar top with the spoon and then we dive in pure heaven. And the good news is that this piece of heaven can be made at home, I think, if we follow the recipe. And uh, this re next recipe is presented to us by pastry chef Laurence uh, Boris. Bonjour, Laurence. Hi, bonjour. En direct de votre cuisine. Oui. Uh, Laurence is a chef pâtissière who gives uh, pastry classes online, in person, and also at the PCC markets uh, since this January, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. And I also work for a pastry shop, which is in Seattle, uh, which name is uh, La Parisienne French Bakery since a few weeks, so I learned a lot with the chef, Patrick Morin, yeah. <laughs> and as so, well, uh, I went and looked at your uh, beautiful desserts on your Instagram page, Cuisine Mon Amour. Oui. And it is aptly named because we, it's very easy to fall in love with everything we see there. It looks so beautiful and so delicious. Thank you very much, thank you. Alors aujourd'hui, on va faire une crème brûlée. Tout et... à fait. Okay, and how, I mean, this is really uh, an important dessert uh, that can be fairly easily made at home? Yeah, it's very easy, in fact, because you need really a few ingredients um, that you can see here in front of me. So you need some heavy cream. So minimum is 30% fat. If you take something with less fat, it will not be so good and it will be too liquid. You need some milk. So for my recipe, I decided to put half of heavy cream inside and half milk so that it's not too heavy, but some uh, chefs do only with heavy cream. It's really good, but it's really fat, <laughs> so it's a choice. And so you need only these ingredients, milk and heavy cream. You need some eggs, you need some sugar and uh, vanilla bean. Um, to 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 give the flavor so yeah you can do it at home very very easily so if you want i can show you now absolutely please okay so first of all uh you need to uh, put your heavy cream and your milk in a simple saucepan like that you put that on your table cook So I take my spatula because if you don't do that, you lose a lot of liquid. precious ingredients. Yes, exactly. So always use a spatula so that you don't lose too much ingredients. And then we will add um, the vanilla. So to prepare the vanilla, you can use a knife and you will try to make your vanilla flat before you open it to take the seeds inside so you do that with your knife you cut it in the middle like that you open it so not so easy because i'm alone at home and i've got only one camera so i try to do it so you open it like that with your knife i don't know if you can see very well what i show you you open it and I do it a little bit more here. And with your knife, you just scratch like that so that you can get all the seeds mm. on, your, on your knife. And you put that in your milk and cream. Very slowly, you try to don't break the bean. If you break it, it's not a problem, it's just a, little bit more time and you put your vanilla bean inside your saucepan you put everything inside and you put that on your heat table um, table cook to high heat but be careful because the milk and the cream will boil quite quickly so just have a look on your table cook so i put that here and during this time, 
I will uh, mix my sugar and my egg yolk in a bowl. So I began to separate uh, the egg yolk and the white eggs. Um, I assume you know how to do that. So you just, I do it with the last egg. You just break your egg, put the white egg in a bowl, and you keep only the yellow part. Very easy. And with the white egg, you can do many things. You can do uh, cheese souffle, you can do uh, mousse au chocolat, but you will need also a little bit of yellow. And you, you, you do meringue and macaron, of course, very easy. And meringue, it's only white eggs and sugar. sugar. You mix everything and you have delicious meringue. Okay, so egg yolks in a bowl, sugar, and you take a whisk and just mix everything until you see that the color is changing a little bit to white. So now we have yellow, shiny yellow, and if you go ahead and mix, you will see that the color is going to change. You can see that already. Right. And you have a beautiful white color appearing. That means that your egg yolks are well mixed. And it's very important to do that. It will be Why? To, to really mix the sugar sorry. in the in the yolk. Sorry? Oui, c'est très important. Pourquoi? It's very important. C'est très important. Euh, parce que ça, ça permet d'avoir une bonne texture à la fin et, et d'avoir vraiment cette texture brillante qui va permettre d'avoir une, une très fine, euh, une, une, une texture très fine en bouche. Oui. Je vous laisse traduire. <rire> oui, donc, on, so we want a very silky smooth texture, texture at the yeah. end in the crème brûlée. Yeah. And doing this is what allows us to achieve that finish. And the recipe is now in the chat too, uh, as a PDF file. Yeah. Exactly. So I just checked my milk, which is becoming to, to be hot. And during my milk is, um, um, is becoming hot. Uh, just to let you know, in fact, the creme brulee has been inventing, invent, invented during uh, the Middle Age. Um, really? Uh, during the Middle Age. And in fact, um, uh, a, a, a duke, uh, the Duke of Orléans, which was a, a kid at this time, um, he loved eating uh, vanilla cream, but he, he was a little bit capricious. He didn't like when it was cold. So uh, he asked to his cook, uh, cooking chef if he can have something hot instead. And the chef, uh, Mr. Masolo decided to try to put some sugar and to heat it uh, with fire on, on the creme brulee. And he tried to do that. And it's what I'm going to show you in five minutes uh, with sugar and with fire. And he obtained a very good caramel on the creme brulee, which is really the specificity of this cream. And um, the Duc d'Orléans loved that. So this is from this time, since this time that we can eat this uh, dessert in France. Yeah. So we owe a lot to the kitchens of the Chateau of France. Yeah. Earlier, we learned that the beurre blanc was invented by mistake in, <laughs> in the Chateau de Goulaine. Yeah. And now the creme brulee. Uh, yeah, because at the beginning, uh, the, the recipe is coming from Spain, because at the beginning, the, the, it's coming uh, from the creme catalane. So it is the same ingredients, except that they put some um, corn flour inside, a little bit of corn flour so that it's more thick. Mm. So it's it's not so light than the creme brulee. The creme brulee is really light. We don't use flour inside, just eggs and sugar and milk and cream. And the creme catalan is not caramelized, caramelized on the top. So you don't, you don't have the crispy texture that, mm. that is really delicious. Yeah, you. and it's the contrast between the crispy top and the super and the smooth cold cream. Yeah. content. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And so I'm coming back. 
So yeah. So um, my milk and my cream are ready. So I'm gonna pour them into my eggs and sugar. I used. Um, uh, um, we um, <laughs> a tammy, but uh, uh, when you see uh, the flour, it's a sifter. Sifter, exactly. <laughs> so you just need to to use that. Sieve, so thank you, sieve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> You can keep your vanilla bean, you can rinse it under the water. And after that, when you will put your cream in your oven, you put your clean vanilla bean. And if you want, you can use it after. You just put that in your uh, granulated, granulated sugar. And when you will use it, you will have a delicious uh, flavor of vanilla. So don't throw it away. You can always, always use it a little bit after. Okay, so you just have to mix all the ingredients together and that's it. So that's it. we just need now to put the cream in our ramekin. I just take this, sorry, and you just pour your creme brulee inside your ramekin and you put your liquid creme brulee in your oven in your oven for one hour and a half to two hours at oh. um 200 fahrenheit degrees very 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 low temperature during two hours and at the end you will obtain this so i made this one Woo, i made this one yesterday <laughs> So this one is ready. Um, you put them in your fridge during three or four hours so that they are very cold. And when they are ready like that, just before you're gonna eat it with your family or your friends, you will put some sugar. So on each cream, you will need to put uh, one tablespoon of sugar. So the best is that you use some uh, brown sugar. I don't know if you can see it, it's brown. It will give a beautiful color. Uh, if you don't have, you use white sugar, but it's really better if you use brown sugar. So you take one tablespoon that you put on your cream. You try to put some sugar everywhere, so don't hesitate to use your finger to, to spread the sugar. And after that, you use a blowtorch and you will burn the sugar to obtain the caramel, the, the caramel on the top. Be careful. So you do it slowly. I don't know if you can see. So someone is asking about the type of sugar, if we can use any kind of sugar uh, for the top. You yeah, mentioned- you use any, Yeah, but it's any really kind? better with uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar, light, okay. Light brown, not the uh, dark brown, light brown. D'accord. Well, on ne prend pas de la cassonade. And if we don't have a blowtorch at home, can we achieve this with uh, maybe the broil function in the oven or we really need the, the blowtorch? So, and that's it. And you obtain this beautiful cream. I don't know if you can see that. And you can check that it's successful. I don't know if you can hear something. Ah, oui. <laughs> This means that it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and that's ready. Yeah. Très beau. Super. Laurence Boris, merci beaucoup pour cette recette. <laughs> Avec plaisir, je vous en prie. The, the small technical question, and then we have to go. But if we don't have a blowtorch, can we still achieve that crust on the top? No. 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 Huh? Okay. No. And I can tell you that 
I don't think I don't think uh, Ariana is at time to explain to you what happened to me. It's very dangerous. So I should have used this one. And I tried to put some gas inside this morning and it burnt everywhere in my kitchen. Oh. <laughs> so a friend of mine gave me this one, which is just perfect. But really, you need this tool, but be careful. Yeah. OK, perfect. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so we'll make sure. Uh, someone was mentioning cane sugar. I'm not sure if that was a question whether we can use cane sugar or an answer, but uh, cane sugar is. Yeah, cane sugar is perfect. Okay, I can, good. This one is really perfect. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so the, the golden one is very. Uh... Yeah, so this one is really perfect to put on the top. It is the best. Perfect. Yeah. So someone's asking for the recipe. If you scroll up a little bit, I think you will see the creme brulee uh, document. It's there. The last PDF that's in the chat is for the dip strawberries. The recipe was updated by Anna. Uh, but just before that, a bit further up in the chat, you see the creme brulee uh, PDF. And so this is it for our triple dessert menu. <laughs> Merci beaucoup à nos trois chefs. Et we are uh, continuing right away uh, with the last segment where we have live music, uh, not like where we have a special music performance and games organized for us. Uh, the link is in the chat. We'll see you just in a minute or two uh, to resume the 2022 edition of the French Fest. 